Hey everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how I paint up this Inquisitor Greyfax model, one of the really cool new 40k models from the Triumvirate of the Imperium. So I start off with the model primed black with Dinorez Black Primer. Since I'm doing a lot of metallics, I really just wanted to, to go over a black primer because it tends to sit the best. And as you know, there'll be a lot of dark colors in this model. So then I start with Lead Belcher. Now in retrospect, I probably should have painted her face first, which you'll notice a little bit of overpainting when I'm doing the face anyway, but luckily it's a, an area that hasn't been painted yet. So as I said, I probably would have started with the, the skin tone first, and I, I just started on the metallics, just as I really wanted to. But as you can see, it does it the best over a, a black primer. It has the nicest shine to it, and with, with Lead Belcher. Um, I should mention that I do thin out all my paints, other than my metallics. I do tend to, I don't thin them out as much with Lamy and Medium. Um, but uh, I'm just going to take the Lead Belcher and apply it to all the metallic model parts of the model. As you can see, there's going to be a bunch of them all over. Uh, there's a lot of silver on this particular model. And at least now, if you do the silvers first and then you cut them in later with other colors, it actually yeah, ends up being nice and, and clean, I find. So, uh, yeah, that's a good approach. I said I just probably would have painted the face first. It is a little hard to get since it's under the hat. That's okay. So I'm just take my time, getting all the silvers, a nice solid coat of silver across the chimney, the backpack, um, her armor, the rim of her hat. That's basically it for the silvers. And then when that was done, I then hit them all with a non oil shading, of course, to add some detail and some shading into the recesses. Um, give it a slightly aged look as well. You know, her armor wouldn't be pristine, so that's okay. So you just get a nice solid coat over the areas before proceeding to the next step. And of course, as always, let it completely dry before doing any highlights. You don't want to accidentally ruin the shading. As you can see, it just adds a bit of detail. And then next, I did a, for a highlight first up with Iron Breaker, leaving a lot of the non oil in the recesses and the edges. Just building up a little bit more of a shine and some, some brightness. Kind of just an overbrush on the hands and the inner legs, as well as one of the central areas. bring back up that shine on the metallic areas but there's still definitely um, some aging to it because of the non-oil shading. And then one more just edge highlight with Rune Fang Steel, the brightest of the silver colors in the GW range just to get a little more pop on these areas. See just the very central parts, the lower areas that the light would be hitting, and just builds up a little more of a shine to more contrast. Pretty quick and easy. And then next, I returned to the skin because I realized afterwards maybe I should have painted the skin. So I started with rat skin flesh. As you can see, I just painted a little bit of the areas that'll be future gold, but that's okay. Stay my time. And I, I did start thinning my paints down with Lamy Medium. And pretty much all the non-italics will be thinned down with Lamy Medium for this tutorial, just so you know. So let's start with Rats and Flesh, just to establish the foundation since we're going over a pretty dark, uh, we're going over a black primer. You just want to take your time and get a nice foundation color before proceeding. And uh, then I went over the Best to Gore Flesh first before doing a shading. So I just wanted to go to the mid-tone first and then shade over that. That way it wasn't too extreme in the recesses and too, you know, character -y. So then I then went with a watered down Reclam Flesh shade just to get in the, in the recesses and give her a little bit of, of tone in the face and on the cheekbones. While I was drying, I painted the red areas of the model using Mephiston Red. As you can see, it is thinned down. It is nice and thin. And the great thing about Mephiston Red is that even when it's thinned down, it does, it's to tend to go for blacks with relative ease. I love it. I love the reds from GW. So I'm just painting the underside of the cape 
uh, her gun, a part of her hat, and the, um, the pattern on the back of her cape. All with my fist on it. And see, it does dry significantly darker, which is nice too. This tutorial, like a couple points, I just kept painting. I really just wanted to get it done in a nice, timely fashion. So I didn't want to stop all I was doing for waiting for shades to dry. I just kept going. Well, once the shade was drying, I started painting the next area. As long as the areas aren't really touching, it's usually quite easy to do. And then I hit those areas with a Caraper Crimson shading. Uh, just the gun, the symbol on her hat, and I really wanted the trim pattern to be accentuated so that the easy way to do that is just hit it with the, the watered down shade and it'll tend to build up towards the, the edges and just make it really uh, just stand out a little bit more. And then I return to the base with the highlight best to go flesh focusing on the raised areas leaving a little bit of the regular flesh shade along the, uh, the edges of her face and just the small tiny details. Most of her face, only about half her face is actually exposed, the other half is uh, metallic. And then I just once again highlight with, with a one to one mix of Best to go and Ungor Flesh. Yep, and then I just keep, keep highlighting up with a one to one mix of the Best to go Flesh and Ungor Flesh. Just being on the top of the nose, chin, cheeks. And then with a quick you know, gradient of colors. And then finally, did this one more time with just Ungor Flesh, just top of the nose and cheeks. As it's not that too much flesh exposed anyway, so it's a pretty quick process to begin with. There we go. So I'll build up a little more detail. And then just did a little bit of Caraber Crimson over the lips. Um, I cleaned it up a little bit afterwards as well. I just wanted to uh, just bring out the color of the lips a little bit. And then I highlighted up the gun and uh, a little bit of the cape with my fist on red as well. Once again, just going back to the original color. Didn't want it to be too extreme of a variation between the recesses and the raised areas. And Kerber Crimson is a very, very dark shade since it's a red. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to make it too cartoony. So I'm so just building up a quick, uh, quick color of my fist on red over the. Uh, the areas that are showing on the bottom of the cape as well, the more raised parts of it. And then just the, the top of the symbol on the hat as well. For the front of the cloak and the purity seals, I painted them with Ushapti Bone. I did two thin coats. I didn't want to go on too clumpy, as Ushapti Bone can do if you do a really thick coat. So I just did two thinner coats, um, and I'll differentiate the two colors with shades afterwards. Uh, I really wanted the front coat to be more sepia tone and the purity seals to be more of a brown. So it's pretty easy to do that with the shades after. So then while it was drying, I started on the gold areas with of course rich gold. You know I love the golds from the Vallejo range of the liquid gold range from Vallejo. They're alcohol based so I cut it with a 99% isopropanol and uh, it just went on beautifully. It has such a great shine to it. It's another reason why you want to go over a dark color. It tends to, to be the best over a black primer. So as you can see, the gold is just, it picks up and just instantly has that nice shine. It's almost like tin foil wrapping the model with this gold. Um, if you wanted a little more detail, I'd recommend then going over with a thin coat of Agrax Earth Shade or into the, like just put it up, apply it directly to the edges and the recesses. But I just, I love the shine of this gold. And the reason why I went with rich gold specifically is it's uh, such a bright, vibrant, yellowy gold. And I figured it have such a nice contrast to the, the colder uh, silver tones and, and uh, just, you know, a lot of dark colors are on this model. So a nice bright gold will really have that great contrast to make the gold areas really pop on this girl. You see, just getting all these areas with rich gold. And when it dries, it just has such an unparalleled shine to it. I love it. Plus, it allowed me to clean up that little uh, mistake from earlier, but that's okay. As long as you paint outwards, it fixes itself. And then I just did a watered down Seraphim Sepia shade onto the front of the, uh, of the cape. That way, it it's, um, has a sepia tone to it. I, I picked up a little bit, I didn't want it to be too extreme of a sepia tone. 
And then I highlighted up the uh, the back of the the cape, and I did a lot of the, uh, the black areas like the hat with gray liner. I left the black primer in the deep recesses, and then just built up a gray liner coat. You know, I really wanted it to be dark. I didn't want it to highlight up to a gray. I just wanted to keep the, the off black. And the great thing about gray liner is it's a very very dark matte gray. So what it does is it, it has that deep, you know, it appears black in the deep tones, but then when you highlight up, it has that gray tone to it. It, it looks like an aged black essentially. And I painted the top of the hat as well, uh, a couple symbols around him, and uh, a couple pieces of the armor as well with the, the gray liner and the hair. It's a nice thin co color from Reaper, and so I didn't need to thin it down, I just took it straight from the dropper onto my palette. And I also painted the gaps in the armor as well. seal parts with a watered down Acre X Earth shape. For the brown areas in the models, the rope around the, sim uh, around the symbol, the uh, part of the crossbow, I went up with more Fang brown, a dark reddish brown. I just wanted to make it look like a leathery, uh, give it like a leathery appearance. So I just made a thin coat of more Fang brown first, and then I'll go over afterwards with a regular flesh shade, which really makes it gives it that old hide look to it. So you just hit it with a great flushing now. There we go. For the candle wick on her on her hat and uh, the symbol the skull symbol on her uh, just on the top of her neck. I painted them with ghost white. I went with a slight off white. It's a cool white, essentially, from Reaper. It's nice and thin, but has a blue tint to it, so it has a, just, I prefer that over a straight white. And then I painted up the flame with Mephisto on red first, and I'll just quickly wet blend um, up some colors for Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm just gonna build up to an orange yellow. So then Evil's, yep. And then I just want an orange. Once again, I'm just blending up quickly as I go. Really working as it's wet. It dries quite quickly, so you gotta work quickly. And then I add some Eero yellow and just uh, once again work my way towards the tip with a yellow, a brighter yellow, and then just you hit Eero yellow by itself. It's quickly wet by the as well. There you go. There you go. A living flame on the candle on her hat. Didn't take very long, it was very quick to do. And then I painted the uh, the symbol on her sword sheath and the uh, the lens on her eye patch using Teclas blue, the midtone blue from Citadel. Once again, thinning down with my medium. And then finally some ghost white just to paint uh, the reflection on the lens. And that's it. So now I've made up this awesome Inquisitor Grayfax, one of the three new models from the uh, Triumvirate of the Imperium. She was fun to paint up. As I said, if you want to add a little more aging to the gold, I'd recommend an Agrax Earth shape, but I love the way she turned up. It wasn't really hard to paint up, and I had a great time doing it. I love painting Inquisition models. She has so much character, and I can't wait to have her on the tabletop kicking butt for the Imperium. So as always, thank you so much for watching this painting tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit about painting Inquisitor Grayfax. I love the model. Stay tuned for more painting tutorials. And thank you as always for supporting my channel. Stay tuned for more vids. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.